We are out here protesting drag queen story hours. Leave our kids alone. We use our umbrellas like shields so that they won't have to see the signs and the angry faces. My First Amendment right. That is our goal 100% is to be able to shield those kids from those protesters. Our mission is about preserving the experience of kids at these events. We do that in a variety of ways. We play music. We just try to engage with them, talk to them a little bit. They're sexualizing children. What makes you think that, sir? What beliefs have you caused to believe that? We try to form big lines with our umbrellas to block them out. The best compliment that we ever receive is our kids didn't even know there were protesters here. The protesters say all the time that we're trying to turn their kids gay. To me, we're not trying to turn kids gay, we're trying to keep the gay kids alive. Wadsworth, Ohio is and probably will always be my worst case scenario. No, no. There were some protest groups that came out. Of course, there were Proud Boys. Of course, there was White Life Matter. There were a couple groups that people aren't familiar with. All of those guys were out there. There's video of somebody pulling what the police said was a pepper ball blaster on me and, and, and pointing it at me. And when I got back to the room and we watched that, I started, I just started crying. Big, tough Eli cried. I mean, it was, it was a lot to kind of sink in and process. So things have increased dramatically. It is scary out there, but we don't want parents to be afraid. We are on our flight. Um, we should be in Columbus in an hour and a half or so. There was another Ohio event that was not very far from there, and the organizers, other people, parents contacted us and said, we don't want to go unless you're there. And so Eli and I, we have a very small budget, but we scraped together the money through a fundraiser to fly out again, and we flew out. So we're in Ohio, and we are here for an event. It's a color run, and they, we are expecting protesters and we had at least 60 volunteers show up. We had the entire street lined with umbrellas and there was a Proud Boy Scout who came down to the corner and he stood there and was on his phone and even told some of our volunteers that Proud Boys were on the way. And he sat there on his phone for a few minutes and then he left. No one showed up. We were surprised, pleasantly surprised. Oh my gosh, we were thrilled. We were so excited. That happens a lot. What we did in Belt Fountain, Ohio, was rally a community. They may not have had any protesters that time, but I promise you, they will be there when they're ready. And that's what we do. That's why we travel, is to rally communities. It makes my heart swell every time the communities show up. I am a proud, queer, HIV-positive guy who's been in the community for over 20 years. I'm kind of known for wearing my kilts, and I always flag some type of rainbow, and that is for the kids that I come across. I want them to be absolutely clear that I'm a safe space, that I am someone that they can come to and talk to. I am a former Marine, um, something that, you know, that nowadays is it, it's kind of tough for me to navigate um i've always been a very proud marine um very proud of my service but to be quite honest um, nowadays the u.s flag has become somewhat of a dog whistle and that's really unfortunate and really hard for me as a marine to to kind of watch that be a symbol of, of it's become a symbol of hate. I mean, not, not for everybody. And I, I understand that, that some people do fly the flag and, and, and still, you know, it's not, not quite that. Eli is the most important person on that line. We walk out to a car and approach them and say, hey, you know, we're from the Parasol Patrol, there are protesters here. Would you like us to escort you through? 
And if they say no, that's fine, but usually they appreciate it and so we walk them past and he's really good at, at organizing all that. Back in 2019, the owner of Mile High Comics was getting ready to start up a monthly all-ages drag show. He shared with me a lot of the a lot of the mail, a lot of the threats he was getting. Bomb threats, we had death threats, uh, we had all kinds of stuff coming in before the first event. So the first event, it was just me. I was out there doing my best to kind of escort folks from their vehicles past protesters and inside. Here in Colorado, we had easily 40 to 60 protesters showing up at almost every event when we started. We knew who the protesters leaders were. We knew where they lived just because we were so familiar with them because they came to every event. It was a monthly event and every event the number of protesters kept doubling. Pasha decided to kind of ask for help and we had over 100 folks show up and that was kind of the beginning of this may be something. There have been some hate groups that we've kind of in you know gotten screenshots from some of their more private-ish you know on Gab and Getter and whatnot and they have specifically said that they won't come to event, an event where parasol patrol is going to be, because what's the point? The point is, is they want to get to the kids and to the families, and if they can't get to them, then what's the point? And they don't show up. Now, in Colorado, it's actually very rare to find protesters at any event. And to me, that just shows the power of the Parasol Patrol. By rallying the community and by rallying locals and having locals say, no, we are not gonna have Nazis in our park. We're not gonna have Proud Boys walking free. When the community comes out in force, it's a beautiful thing. We have folks outside screaming that we're grooming kids, we're doing all this inappropriate stuff, and I've invited people, please, come inside and sit with me and watch and see what's going on. None of them do. We have had uh, protesters that have snuck inside to events and videoed, and that video never makes it online because it doesn't fit their narrative. We hear all this stuff about, don't parent my kids, don't me tell me how to vaccinate them, don't tell me how to, you know, books they can have or not have in classrooms. But conversely, they're trying to tell other parents how to raise their kids, children that they are, are, that are not theirs. If you don't want your kids to go to Drag Queen story time, great, don't take them. <laughs>Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.